have you on a lot of our interviews we just kind of dawdle about people's development but you guys actually are, have something to promote thanks for having us on and uh, so we're happy to be here and excited to promote our show at the Neutra Museum the Neutra Museum the Neutra. in Silver Lake correct correct and Dulce uh, is Curated by Cur Dulce Stein, <laughs> yes. the legendary Los Angeles curator. Yes, she's yeah. kind enough to include us and to promote us on, at the Neutra. And this is the sixth show she has uh, curated there, correct? I believe so. Okay, okay. And so how did you two meet? Well, I was having a show at LA Art Corps. Oh, and the great LA Art Corps. <laughs> wow. Yes. Okay. And Robert, the, the receptionist there, said, you have to see this woman's work. Um, it's it's fantastic so I did and then lo and behold she showed up at art boot camp art world boot camp what the <laughs> hell is the, that the finishing school for artists the finishing school well you yes. know we we polish you up and then push you and on your spit way you out <laughs> <laughs> bye and um so we we met there and I feel that our work although very different relates to each other in that it's it's abstract, but it also has certain representational qualities that are compelling and draw the viewer in. So, you know, in a lot of abstraction, color field abstraction, all over abstraction, both of you make abstract painting that have, paintings that have points of interest, correct? Yes, that is correct. But um, in my case, it's not so much that I plan that point of interest. I let it evolve. You're, you're a much more organic painter than the average abstract painter. You, I, don't, you don't tape out the little no, square ahead no, of time. No, I have no interest in no. that. No. What, is there a vitality to abstraction? I mean, you know, Jackson Pollock was 60-some years ago now. Jackson Pollock died 61 years ago. Uh, you know, is, is, it, is, it, is there a vitality to abstraction that's new? Is there some, is there, are there still new abstract paintings to be made? Well, are, you, are, you, are you mining historical territory? Are you, are you pushing into new territory? Um, I feel a combination of all of the above, and I think as long as your work as an abstract type painter remains introspective, it's always going to be fresh. And if you're a painter like Emily and myself, we're always, you know, you can see the, the, the hand in the painting because it's all about the paint hitting the surface. Which is inherently you. Yes. I've heard, I, I guess the best way to describe, and this is said of some abstract painters, and I would, I would apply it to both of you, is that it's impossible to forge something so personal. Absolutely. So you don't have to worry about, you know, a factory in China making 1,500 of, of what you guys you know, do an good, hour. Good luck copying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, stuff, you know. so who's, whose painting are we looking at here? That's mine. That's, wow. Uh, that's the crocodile and the snake. Ooh, wow. So um, clearly there's recognizable imagery, but, um, well, this one isn't as abstract as others, but it's more about the surface quality and the mark making. It's um, a very... Um, the paint on it is very thick and somewhat muscular with the, with the depth of paint on it. Um, I like Susan Rothenberg's work a lot, and so I was thinking about her in this piece. And it's a reference to, there was this epic battle about a snake and a crocodile fighting for four hours until the snake eventually consumed the crocodile. So in this piece, the action is, um, just inferred off, off canvas, but I've tried to tell the story, leaving um, things up to the viewer's own imagination. I, I'm I'm just trying to imagine the indigestion of <laughs> of grabbing a whole of a whole uh, alligator there, a crocodile. What's the difference? Is there an, is there a difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Yes, yes. there is. Yeah. What's the, the difference? Snout the, the snout. Yeah, they have and the, the teeth. Crocodile has long. Like, okay. Long, yeah. 
Wow, wow, wow. And what are we looking at here? Um, that's my latest piece. It's called Modifications of Consciousness, which is what I'm calling my whole new body of work, and uh, Emily's as well, apparently, because I, I titled that for our, our show. I use that as our title. And what I try to create here is uh, somewhat of a distilled image that's blended into a, an atmospheric background, but also, on the other hand, takes on more of a, an architectural look as well. It's just almost a color field. Um, with it's a color field, but there are, there are points of interest. In yes, yeah. there's points of interest and there's a lot of patterns and a wow. lot of uh, layers of translucent color. Do you use, is it oil-based, acrylic-based? Oil. oil. I strictly use oil. Oh man, that's a lot of oil paint. Yes, it is. Wow. Where, you you what, can't really get that kind of color with acrylic. Now, you're, without, I know you haven't been compensated to say this, but what's your favorite oil paint? I'm trying, maybe you could, because you could send him this tape and say, time, uh, Le, to, time I, to give me some freebies here. Yeah, Lafranc Bourgeois. Lafranc Bourgeois? Yes. Where, where do you get those? Well, I've, I've, I've never heard of those. At the art store. At the art supply store? Yeah. I haven't painted since 1989, but you know. Oh, you're missing out. Well, <laughs> no, you know what? We're all better off. <laughs> yeah, or I also like saint -Alay. Saint -Alay? I'm, probably, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Uh-oh, how do you spell -E -N -N -L -I -E -R. it? S-E-N-N-L-I-E-R. Yeah. Yeah, she knows. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're an oil painter too, correct? I'm an oil painter and sometimes um, I use so much paint that sometimes the Blick cheap student grade will set the foundation of what I do. That's what I do. And then you put the expensive stuff on hey, top. Picasso used house paint. Picasso used house paint. Okay, so, so, okay so, so the show opens February 18th. That's correct. Okay, and um, now, you know, you guys are known artists in the LA art scene. Where, where, is this your biggest show to date? Um, aside from Artcore and... You've both shown at Artcore? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, how, and how was your experience at LA Artcore? LA Artcore was good. It's a good springboard for other shows and people getting to know yeah, you. it is. And, and it's, it has such a, like, a long history. It does. Yeah. Well, I had a lot of gallery people show up at my show. Wow. I had a tandem show as well with another artist. And okay. people from Bergamont Station showed the up. The tandem solo show but pioneered by Lydia Takeshita <laughs> in 1979. Yeah. She's tough. Huh? She's tough. Do you want to hear a Lydia Takeshita story? Is it okay? She was my painting teacher. And she told me, no. you are not a painter, you're a writer. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Okay. Here's my story about her. She walked into my studio and at the time I was doing more abstract, but for years I painted nude women. I made a living from it practically, but they were kind of abstract too. And she said, I said, what do you think of that? Oh too easy and she just moved yeah Whoa. yeah and, and so that that was a changer for me you know what you know what you know what we called that at cal state la we called that slamming the lid yeah. the lid lydia takeshita <laughs> and do you have a lydia takeshita story how was the studio visit with her um actually she always just looks at me and goes your name emily right ah. and I'm, so I'm like, yeah that's me oh well, <laughs> so. I, I love i love lydia so you moved from working with lydia takesha and now you're working with dulce stein is that a good yeah. experience yes really good and i actually have a show coming up in new york so that's pretty exciting wow where, where, when's your show in new york it is march 3rd is Wait, the opening. oh gee man february 18th march 3rd yeah, yeah. wow so frequent flyer miles here where where where, where in new york um, it's in Chinatown also. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm up to here with Chinatown. <laughs> where, where, where at in Chinatown? Um, it's on um, Hester Street. Oh, okay. What's City. the name of the space? Um, Jane Murr Gallery. Oh, okay. Great, great, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, uh, and you've shown, uh, now, Artcore, of course, kind of like a, I mean, you're saying the gallery owners go, but, but to me it was always like there's, like there's a community aspect with artists, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, are you, do you feel like you're part of the LA art community? You have a lot of, lot of, lot of friends in the, uh, artists are your best friends as far as recommending you all over. Do you, do you feel that? I feel that I'm getting there. Yeah? Yeah. Um, it's, I, for years, you know, I had an art dealer that sold my work, and so I didn't have to really do anything. Kind of isolates you, right? Yes, very much so. Uh, uh, but I'm enjoying myself very much. It's like, it's like going to parties in, in high school. Oh, really? But better. <laughs> and, and, and you can get drunk and not get yelled at by your parents. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. Well, oh, whoa. Now, whose painting is this? That's mine. Wow. Great, great, great. What, what is the title of this painting? Oh, my goodness. Um, I actually, it's just part of the series. It's modifications of consciousness. Okay, so, so, so basically everything is kind of under this that is umbrella? This all new work. Okay, this so, is all new work. So yes. you could say this is untitled? 
I could, and but I may title it before yeah. it, it hangs in the show. But if you look closely, there's a lot of bats in there. You've got three weeks to title it, okay? We could have our viewers, we could, they, they, could, they could pipe in and recommend we a title. We have to have a door prize then. A door. <laughs> <laughs> title this painting? Yeah. Win this painting. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, uh, parting thoughts. Are you happier to be an artist in Los Angeles? Is there any other part of the world you would rather be? right now as a professional practicing artist? I feel like LA is really happening right now with all the galleries coming from New York here. I think LA is a very happening scene right now. So, I'm, and I'm thrilled to be at the brewery. The brewery art Shout colony. Shout out to the brewery people who I love. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's a good community for me there. Great. Regina, is there anywhere you'd rather be as a working artist right now? No. No? I love it here. I'm from, I'm from LA. Oh, so it's a little easier when it's home. That's true. All yeah. the people who move here is like, eh. Well, I lived in New York, though, too. Okay. Yeah, and I'm here to say that I, I prefer Los Angeles. Right on. Yeah. Regina Argentine, Emily Halpern, thanks for being on the show. It's my pleasure. All right, we'll be back right after this with Pierre Picot. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're great. So great. So great. Yes. Yes. Did you